All right, the Judges chapter 13, just two verses, just two verses to read. Verses 24 and 25. And the woman bare a son and called his name Samson. And the child grew, and the Lord blessed him. And the Spirit of the Lord began to move him at times in the camp of Dan between Zorah and Eshtol. Uh, Brother Dave Sr., would you pray this morning over the message? Yes, thank you, Lord, for... Please bring us into the patient waiting for Christ, Lord. Help us to just wait for you to have that role called up yonder. And thank you for adopting all of us and having us all be brothers and sisters, Lord. And, Amen. And thank you for this message that we can receive. And Amen. may your words come alive to us, Lord. May your Amen. Holy Spirit be the sword of the Spirit cutting, cutting through our heart to get the truth into us. Yes, Amen. Amen. And help us to love your words and to love you and love each other with the love of Christ. Amen. Amen. And thank you, Lord Jesus, for always having pity upon us and never treating us according to what our sins deserve. And That's right. Help us to grow in you, Lord. And Amen. Help us to know, Lord Jesus, that you said we have to be like little children, Amen. not to be thinking we're, we're something we aren't. And right. Help us to just be childlike for the faith of Christ and Amen. to be like you more and more. And, and please bless this message and protect us, Lord, Amen. until the day you take us home and please work in us to... Keep doing your will for your glory and to just have other people know about you. In Jesus' amen. name, amen. Amen. Thank you. May be seated. This is going to be a very uh, milky sermon this morning. Uh, there's not a whole lot of depth to it. And uh, I've got good reason for that. I did have another message I, I, I put together uh, with the Lord's direction, I believe. And uh, I thought I might preach it. It would have piggybacked the Friday night sermon by Brother Kogel, but um, I think the Lord had me just to preach this, and uh, I was looking for some sort of confirmation, and I'm walking the dog this morning, as I generally do on, in the morning time, and uh, there's, a, there's a car that's always parked in front of her house, and the license plate on it says growth. And I don't know what she's talking about. She could have a growth. I don't know. <laughs> I don't have any idea. I don't know what they grow, but or what she's talking about. But that for me was just one of those things where, you know, I already knew I was going to preach it. The Lord had already told me before I left the house. But uh, but I walked and I saw that and I said, "All right, Lord, I, I I appreciate that. I didn't need that more than what you already told me, but I appreciated that." And uh, really, it's just uh, it's a very basic message, and I think we need it. And it's based on verse 24. The Bible says, And the child grew. The child grew. That's the title of the sermon this morning. The child grew. And it's really about, as I said in Sunday school, it's about growing. It's about cr growing. Christian growth. Spiritual uh, growth. Uh, we are all the children of God if, in, by Christ Jesus. We have, if, you have, if you are saved this morning, you've been born again into the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, into the kingdom of God, that you are a child of God. And God's desire for every one of His children is that they should grow. That's the desire of any parent, to watch their children grow up. Now it's hard to watch them grow up, because you, you miss out on all the, the things that they used to do, the, all the cute little noises they make, and you know, th those things, they, they can wear at you, you know, the crying and the Dirty diapers, those things can wear at you, but you'll miss them yeah. because they were dependent on you for so much. And then as they grow up, they just stop being so dependent upon you, and now you're dependent upon them. Yeah. It's kind of an interesting thing. And uh, But every parent desires to see their child grow. On some level, it gives you a level of success in your own mind. Mm. I've successfully grown a child in my womb for nine months. I have successfully given birth to this child. I have successfully cared for and provided for this child. And now look, this child has grown up and they're out of their house and they are doing the same thing that I once did. And now I'm the grandparent watching them do make all the same mistakes I made. And yet look how good they turned out, you know. So that's the desire of any parent, any good parent, any good parent, is to watch their children grow. And uh, the, the Bible likens God to being our Father. Yeah. Doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one of the ways that God likens the relationship between God and man is a father and a son. A master and a servant and a husband and his wife. Uh, God likens us to a family. He says that 
We get the whole family of God in Ephesians. So God the Father desires to see His child grow. Originally when I was putting this sermon together in light of the verse here, I was going to preach on all the different men in the Bible that the Bible says grew up. And uh, it's, that just got to be too complicated and too long. And I'm already long-winded enough. So just quickly, the Bible says that the child Moses grew. In Exodus chapter 2, verse 10, the child Moses grew. The Bible says in 1 Samuel 2, 26, that the child Samuel grew. The Bible says in Luke chapter 1, verse 80, that the child John the Baptist grew. Then the Bible says in Luke chapter 2, verse 40, that the child Jesus grew. Amen. You know, God the Father is the biological father of God the Son. Amen. Jesus said uh, uh, that he had God's blood. That it was God that died for the church. It was God who gave his blood for the church. And we know that it was Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who shed his blood on Calvary. That was God's blood. That was God the Father's bloodline that was shed on Calvary. And God the Father watched his biological son grow from a babe in the womb of nine months to being birthed through Mary in a manger to then growing up in Bethlehem in, in Egypt for a while and, and in Bethlehem for a while and then and then uh, Jerusalem there, and he watched his son, his only begotten son, come into the world and then grow up and then leave this world. That's the hardest thing for any parent to do is to bury their child. No parent wants to bury their child. God the Father, in a way, had to bury his only begotten son. Right. He had to turn his back on his only begotten son. Yeah. That's a hard thing for any parent to have to do. If you're going to behave that way, now the Lord didn't sin to deserve that, but He took our sins yes. upon Himself, which caused the Father to turn His back on His Son. Sometimes parents have to say, that can't happen in this house. If you want to commit those things here, you can't be here anymore. Hard love, tough love. That's why it's good to spank them early. Yep. Discipline them early. The Bible says, if thou chastenest betimes, that word betimes means early, deliver that soul from hell. As parents, we're supposed to train up our children in the way that they should go. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 22, verse 6. And the same is true for the spiritual child of God. Even Jesus said that he had to learn obedience by the things which he suffered. The spiritual child of God needs to be nurtured, cared for, and trained in the way that they should go spiritually. Paul writes that the child of God is supposed to grow up into the fullness and stature of Christ, Ephesians 4, verses 13 and 15. Paul says that as you grow, that Christ will be formed in you, Galatians 4, verse 19. Paul also writes, and I showed you this morning in Sunday school, how that we are supposed to grow in the grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, 2 Peter chapter 3, Verse 18. The spiritual child of God is supposed to grow up. That is God the Father's desire to see you and I grow up. Well, there are three basic principles that will help an individual and a local church to grow up. Originally, when I put this sermon together, I wrote it only for the individual. And as I began to sit through the message this week, and as I began to reflect upon the preaching this week, what I realized is that the local church is made up of individuals. And while we need individuals to grow, we need the whole body of Christ represented here this morning to grow up. And there are three basic principles that will help you to grow individually and then collectively the body of Liberty Bible Baptist Church to grow. The first thing is found in 1 Peter chapter 2. You can leave, Judges. 
And as you begin to grow, the, you'll begin to see the work, the Lord work at times in your life. As it happened in Samson's life. As this church begins to grow, we will see the Lord move, the Spirit of the Lord move at times and hopefully frequently. Amen. Now, I'm not talking about growing in number and in size. Yeah. Right as I hit that license plate this morning, the thought was all, had already hit my mind and then I saw the plate. Here was the thought that the Lord gave me. It's not profound, but it's just a thought. It's how my mind works. You don't grow a child by putting it in a nursery. Does that make sense? <laughs> the, way you, the way you grow a child isn't by giving birth to them and then putting them in a nursery somewhere and thinking that by way of the other children and their height and stature and build and by the fact that they've already had some growth, that if you take your child and put them in the midst of all those other children, that those children will somehow cause your child to grow. <laughs> growth does not come by going someplace and sitting amongst other people. Right. Growth doesn't come that way. The way a child grows is you have to nurture that child Amen. in your home. Amen. You have to physically care for and take care of your child. It is your job, it is your responsibility in your home to make sure that child is well cared for, well loved, well nurtured, well fed, well dressed. That's how a child grows. So that's not very profound. I told you it wouldn't be. <laughs> What I'm saying is just you coming and sitting in church or just having a church grow in size does not mean that that church has grown at all. That's right. Yeah. Any more than putting a child in the nursery every day for the rest of its life until it's six feet tall that you begin to think, well, it's because it was sitting inside of a nursery for its whole life that it grew to be that size. No, it's because it came home with you and you took care of it. That's what made it grow. So what I'm talking about is not physical growth by way of the, as, as Dr. as uh, Brother Kogel said, uh, noses and, uh, what do you say, noses and something else. What was it? Nichols. Nichols and noses. I'm not talking about bodies and dollars. I'm not talking about physical growth by way of this church. I'm talking about, and it's always been the desire of your, your pastor's heart, and I've said it since day one, is I'm not concerned about physical growth for this church. I'm concerned about spiritual growth for this church. Now, I want physical growth. Any any person would want physical growth, right? Because you can do more as you have. But if all you have is physical growth and no spiritual growth, who cares what you do? Yeah. It's vanity. It's pride. And we're not going to have anything in our account at the judgment seat of Christ. Right. A church that is growing spiritually, and then by that we are growing physically, we will have more account to account for there at the judgment seat of Christ. So I want to give you just three basic principles to grow individually and then grow as a local church. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 2. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. The first basic principle that you as an individual or we as a local church need to grow is we need to partake of the milk of the word. It's a very milky sermon this morning. <laughs> first Corinthians chapter 3 verse 2 says this, I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. One of my jobs as a pastor, the Bible says, look well to know uh, the condition or the status of thy flock. One of my jobs as a pastor is to look at this flock, this church, and find out where, what stage of growth are we in. How old are we? Now sometimes a church can grow and be of mature age and something happened all of a sudden you're right back down into infant size again. And uh, as I begin to look at our church, as I begin to look at the people in our church, I begin to realize we might need to partake of some milk for a while. Sure, sure. Yeah. 
It's good to just stop for a second and realize the church that we have right now, not the church that we maybe had. In other words, you may not need to hear about the gap for about two or three years from now. Amen? You might need to get milk as individuals in order for this church to grow as a local church, we might need more milk. And that's not a bad thing. Because I want to give you some meat, but you're not able yet. Maybe we were able for a time, but as you and if you were to be honest with yourself, if you look at this church, you might recognize we have not necessarily new faces, but new babes. Yeah. Or people that have been out uh, in the world for a long time that never got rooted and grounded in doctrine to begin with, and they're just newly coming around to Bible truth and doctrine, and they need milk. And I fear maybe I, I gave meat for too long and perhaps that has hindered some growth spiritually. Maybe that has prevented some from being able to continue to grow with us. And I'll have to give account for that at the judgment seat of Christ because I gave meat when I should have been giving you milk. The truth is, not everyone is able to partake of the meat of the word because they are still babes. So they need to be fed the milk of the word. And if that's true for individuals, then that's true for a local church. Say, what is the milk of the word? What are you talking about? What's milk? The milk of the word is the precepts. The milk of the word are, it are, are the basic instructions for Christianity. Now, there's a whole lot more in that Bible than just basic instructions before leaving earth. B-I-B-L-E, basic instructions before leaving earth. There's a whole lot more in that Bible than just milky precepts. Amen. Nevertheless, you need to have the basic fundamental precepts of the Word of God before you can move on to the meat of the Word of God. Look at Hebrews chapter 5. For some of you may never have seen these verses. You might have read through your Bible once or twice or half a dozen times even, but never actually paid attention because why would you? You're just, you're, you know, it's just not something that stuck out, stood out to you. Hebrews 5, verse 12, For when the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God. Now, if you don't know what the oracles are, the oracles are the scriptures. The oracles are the words of God. That's what the oracles are. And there are first principles of the words of God found in scripture. And are become as such, or and are become such as have need of milk, and not of strong meat. For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. Now, see, you read that and you think, well, that's negative. If you are preaching milk to us, then you think that I'm not skilled. That's exactly what I think. That's what the Bible thinks. Amen. If you have to, if you have to be fed milk, then guess what? It's because you still are unskillful in the word of God. And the last thing you need to do is to go out into battle unskillfully. It's called basic training before going into the army to fight a battle. Right? You need to know the weapon in your hand before you can expect to know how to fire it. Is that true? Yes. It's not a shame to be considered unskillful in the Word. My job is to give you that skill. I used to coach little boys basketball, 6th, 7th grade basketball. Teach them basic, fundamental basketball skills because they were unskillful in basketball. And guess what? If they paid attention, if they listened, they graduated on to a better team and made that team. Because they got the skills. We call it muscle memory. 
the more often you do it, the better off you are at it. Dr. Peacock, who was 20 years on the Duval Sheriff's Department in Jacksonville, Florida, he says the most uh, required and necessary thing for a police officer to continue to do is the basic, fundamental, five feet pole step shoot, pole step shoot within a five feet range. Everybody wanted to hit, you know, two, three hundred, four hundred yard shot. The ones that they always forgot what to do was the one within five feet of the uh, of the of the of the uh, uh, the perpetrator. And he says that's the one you have to practice over and over and over and over because you think you know it because well you can shoot somebody down range, but close combat it's a whole different story. And so that's the milk of law enforcement. That's the milk of Tactical training is the basic stuff. Pull, step, shoot. Pull, step, shoot. Pull, push, back, step. Right? That's the, that's the basic stuff. And who wants to just do That's boring, isn't it? You want to have the fun stuff, man. You want the deep stuff. You want the, you want the doctrine that is still, you know, six billion years from now. You don't want that stuff that's right up in front of your face. The milk of the word is the precepts, which are the basic instructions for Christianity. And he says, that's okay if that's what you need. And church, let me just say this. That's okay if that's what we need is milk. If we need to reset our diet to go back to milk and stay off the meat for a while, well, that's okay to do. An infant Christian needs the milk of the word just as much as the local church needs in its infancy. I'm talking about the milk of the word. I'm not talking about that instant carnation stuff. I'm not talking about powdered milk, brothers and sisters. I'm, not, I'm talking about the real stuff. That, those new Bibles, that's, that's powdered milk. That's right. That's counterfeit milk. Yep. This is the real milk of the word. Amen. This is what you need to grow is the Amen. word of God, the King James Bible word of God. Amen. You don't need that instant stuff, that powder and stuff. You don't need that. Amen. Look at Isaiah 28. Number one, if we are to grow as individuals or to grow as a church, we need to partake of the milk of the word. Isaiah chapter 28. Isaiah 28.9 Isaiah 29, 28.9 Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breasts. God's desire has always been breastfeeding. For precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people, to whom he said, This is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest, and this is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. Yep. The problem is you're not being fed, the problem is you won't drink. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But the word of the Lord was unto them precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little, that they might go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. Wherefore, because of these things, wherefore, hear the word of the Lord, ye scornful men, that rule this people which is in Jerusalem. Yep. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Yeah. Ye have need of the first principles, which are the oracles of the Lord. That is that what you need is the milky word of God if you're going to grow. Yeah. But just having it at your disposal is not the same as partaking of it. Just sitting there and listening is not the same thing as hearing yeah. Faith cometh by hearing, 
If you haven't grown up in the Lord and yet you've been sitting there and being given milk, it's because you have not heard what's being preached and what's being taught. The first way that you individually or we collectively grow is partaking of the milk of the word. But notice what he says in verse number 9. Who shall we teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk. The second thing we need to grow as individuals or as a local church is we need to then be weaned from that milk. What does weaning mean? It means to be drawn from the breast. It means you don't need it that close anymore. You don't need mommy to give it to you. You can take it on your own. The infant child needs the breast of his mother to get that milk. I think it's no coincidence that in the world they've done everything they can, as Kim about all this, to remove the child from the mother. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And immediately stick it on a bottle. Mm -hmm. Because that's the fast track. That's the modern ecumenical way of doing things. Yeah. Powder. Yeah. It's not the real stuff. The real stuff comes from the body that God made and the way that God made a woman. To take care of a child. And this, if I'm not being too graphic this morning, this is the breast of God. Amen. The Bible says that John leaned upon the breast of Jesus. Nevertheless, there comes a time where you don't need it as much. The milk, that is. There'd be something wrong with a 13-year-old on his mother's chest. There's a time to be weaned from it. So the second thing that we need if we're going to grow as individuals or grow as a church is to be weaned from the breast or from the milk. Look at 1 Samuel chapter 1. I'll take you to 1 Samuel. He's a child that grew, so I'll show you something here. Again, famous passage. You've probably read it several times. But maybe this word didn't stick out to you. Maybe it will in light of the sermon this morning on how to grow individually, spiritually, or a local church collectively, spiritually. 1 Samuel 1, 24. You know the story. Hannah did, couldn't have children. She prayed. And God gave her a child named Samuel. The Bible says in verse 24, And when she had weaned him, she took him up with her three bullocks and one ephah of flour and a bottle of wine and brought him unto the house of the Lord in Shiloh. And the child was what? Young. young. The child was young. Look at uh, chapter 2 and verse 26. Here's where you see, And the child Samuel grew on and was in favor both with the Lord and also with men. This child went from being an infant child who needed his mother to supply him the milk. So now she is taking Samuel and she's, the Bible says he's young and he's, she's dropping him off with Eli and now Eli is going to be the primary caretaker for Samuel for the rest of his life. No sooner does Hannah get a child, she gets rid of him. <laughs> and how kind, she brings him a sweater every year. You know. <clears throat> but he was weaned from the milk. He grew up. Samuel grew and was weaned, the Bible says, as a young child. Look at Matthew chapter 2. How old is a young child? Look at Matthew chapter 2. You know, in the Bible there's, there's words like young child or young man or strong man or old man or lad. And there's no age given concerning that. I've often wondered, how old is a lad? Well, I'm going to show you something here that will tell you how old a young child is. So it will tell you how old Samuel was. Or I can give you at least within a very close range. Uh, what am I saying? Matthew chapter 2. 
Look at Matthew 2, chapter 8. Uh, Matthew chapter 2, verse 8. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. This is speaking of Jesus. And when ye have found him, bring me word again, that I may come and worship him. And when they heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star, uh, uh, the star, uh, which they saw in the east, went before them, till they came and stood over where the young child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold, and frankincense, and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt. And be thou there until I bring thee word, for Herod will seek the, that's five times now, will yeah. seek the young child to destroy him. When he arose, he took the young child, number six, and his mother by night and departed into Egypt. And was there until the death of Herod that it might be fulfilled which he had spoken, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceeding wroth, and sent forth and slew all the children uh, that were in Bethlehem, watch it, from two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. Six times he says, young child. Yep. How old do you think that young child was? Right there, it just told you. Two years old. At two years old, Samuel was probably weaned from his mother. I uh, look, look, look at Genesis chapter 21. Genesis chapter 21. Before I give you something else to that. At two years old, at two years old, the Bible says that Jesus was a young child. Jesus, the, 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 the gifts and the wise men didn't come to the manger while Jesus was in a, uh, while Jesus was laying there in swaddling clothes, wrapped in, in wrapped swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. They came to a house where Jesus was as a young child, yeah. probably around two years old, the same age that Samuel was when he left his home and went over to uh, live with Eli. Genesis 21. Look at verse 8. This concerns Isaac. And the child grew, and the child grew, and was what, church? Weaned. weaned. And Abraham made a great feast the same day that Isaac was weaned. So there we see that Samuel was weaned from the milk. We see that Isaac was weaned from the milk. It stands the reason that Jesus Christ, when he was a young child, would have had to be weaned from the milk. Therefore, the same thing can be said for you, that as you grow, there's going to come a stage where you're going to go from being an infant to a young child. And what should happen? You should be weaned from the milk. I wanted to make sure the Bible was accurate. <laughs> so I Google searched what's the average age of when a child is weaned from the mother's breast, weaned from milk. The average age is two to four years old. Mm -hmm. So I could say this that Isaac and Samuel and Jesus was between the ages of two and four years old when they were weaned. How long should it take an individual, a newborn babe in Christ, before? they reasonably are able to be weaned from the milk of the word, the first principles, two to four years. If they're partaking, if they're drinking, if they're discipled, two to four years to be drawn from the breast of the milk of the word to move on to something else. Well, what about a local church? How long should it take a local church from the time it started in its infancy until the time that probably it can be drawn from the breast and from the milk of the word? probably two to four years. Now, I've been pastoring five years. Liberty's been about five years old. But we've had some different people come in right. and go out. People save, right? So sometimes you, you can't always judge it that way. But in reality, it should take the Christians of a local church 
two to four years of partaking of the milk of the word before they are actually ready to move on to something else. Now, see, I know what Christians think. I don't want to wait two to four years. Yeah. I want to know it all now. Oh, yeah. Pastor, give it all to me now. I want to grow to full age now. I don't want to wait two to four years. That's an eternity. Well, how many of you thought that while you were in the womb? It takes two, nine months is too long. You didn't think that. How many of you thought that while you were in diapers? This is too long for me. You didn't have those thoughts. Why? Because it just takes its course right. on you. If you'll just come and sit and be satisfied Amen. and be sincere, two to four years will go like that. Amen. And I'm not going to just give milk. I'm going to sprinkle in other stuff as well because I do have older, mature Christians that need more than just milk. So you'll get a little bit here. But what you need and what this church needs right now, I believe, is milk. Yeah, sure. Primarily milk. Amen. In order to understand sound doctrine, which would be the meat and the strong meat of the word, you must first be able to be weaned from the milk of the word. What you need as a babe is to understand how much God loves you. Amen. You know what milk is? Milk is eternal security. Yeah. That's milk. Yeah. Milk is just, hey, read your Bible once a day, a chapter or two if you can, or a verse. That's milk. Milk's not saying you've got to get through your Bible in a year as a newborn babe. Milk is, hey, try to read your Bible once every day. That's milk. The milk of knowledge and understanding comes how? Line upon line, little by little. Two to four years before you're able to be weaned from the milk and move on to the meat. It might take a local church two to four years before the majority of the congregation can begin to be weaned off milky preaching and teaching and move on to meteor sermons and topics. <laughs> Lastly, go to 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. <clears throat> the Bible says, Look well to know the state of thy flocks. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Look at verse 14. The Bible says this, But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child, two to four years old, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. And in all Scripture now, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good work. The first thing that you need, and what a local church needs to grow, is partake of the milk. Secondly, you need to be weaned from the milk. The third thing, the last thing I'll give you this morning by way of what you need as an individual, what we need as a church, is we need to continue in the things which we have already learned. Amen. The continuing in the things which you have learned will make you a man. Verse 17. Notice he goes from being a child in verse 15 to being a man in verse 17. In other words, if you will partake and be weaned and then continue, you will go from being a young child to a child to a young man to a man and then to an old man if you will just continue in the things which you already learned. You see, the milk is there to let you know this is what the body needs. Milk, it does the body good. Remember the old things they used to say, who's got milk on the t-shirts, you know? Yeah. And everybody had milk mustaches up there, you know? Remember those days? Mm -hmm. What happened to the where's the beef commercials and who's yeah. got milk? Yeah. But that's the, that's the thing. Who's got milk? Well, there's a lot of churches that have milk. Yeah. And that's a good thing. Yeah. But you have to still grow up beyond just the milk. 
But it doesn't mean because you're beyond the age of milk that you stop drinking milk. Amen. It still does the body good. Now, not this stuff they got out here with all, packed full with all the hormones and all the junk that's, you know, caked in it. It's, mom, mom's been drinking milk her whole life and she's got osteoporosis. I say whatever the government's telling you to do, just do the opposite. But the Bible says you need milk. This Bible says you need milk. The world says you don't need this milk. Yeah, that's right. They say you need our milk. Yeah. You don't need this milk. The Bible says you need this milk that you need. You need this milk. Amen. But just because you're beyond the age of milk does not mean you stop drinking the milk. You as an individual, we as a church need to be reminded of how good the milk tastes. Yeah, exactly. Amen. The simplicity of Christ. You need to be reminded of how good the milk is. Secondly, we need to continue in the milk because it helps support a healthy diet. Mm -hmm. It helps us helps to support and wash down the meat. Mm -hmm. If I give you a big old loca steak from the Word of God, what you need to wash it down is some milk or some water of the Word. Amen. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you're going to be choking on doctrine. If all I do is preach on, um, you know, the tribulation or the antichrist, the son of perdition, well, that's how's that going to help you grow as a child of God? That's right. Mm -hmm. Amen. You're never going to meet the son of perdition. You ain't got to worry about that guy. Yeah. yeah. So what do you need? What do you, we don't need sermon after sermon about that. Yeah. But you, we need it sprinkled in here and there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that comes with milk. Hey, because God loves you. You ain't got to worry about the Antichrist, yes, right? Yeah. You see, you always take the harder stuff to be understood in the Bible and you wash it down with milk. But unless you understand the love of God, which is that milk, you can't understand Bible prophecy and end time prophecy. You don't know why you get out before the tribulation starts unless you first understand the milk of love. The milk of eternal security. That's just milk. See, but... Christians want to stay over here. Right. You much rather mow down on a porterhouse than drink a glass of milk for dinner, right? Yeah. Or a glass of water. But nevertheless, this is what helps you to understand yeah. sound doctrine. Whom shall he teach knowledge right. and understanding? Only after you're weaned from the milk. How long does it get take to before I can get weaned from the milk, preacher? About two to four years of being saved. Yeah coming regularly, getting discipled, understanding the first principles of your salvation. <laughs> Lastly, we need to continue in the things which we have learned so we can continue to have our minds exercised not only in the basic things, but in the deeper things of God so we can stay sharp and alert. The Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword. Brother Dave prayed in his prayer. Might not have picked up on it. But he said, Lord, thanks for leaving some things vague. Mm -hmm. So our minds can be blown. Mm -hmm. See, the reason why you need the milk of the word is because that's the basic stuff concerning heaven. God gives you basic instructions about heaven. Yeah. But he also left it vague. And he gave you some meteor things like uh, 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 of his kingdom there shall be no end. And you begin to think, man, are we going to be having babies out? Are there going to be children born in eternity? God, are we going to be are we going to be living on planets in outer space? God, where's outer darkness? <clears throat> but see, if you don't understand the basic concepts of what heaven is, you shouldn't be trying to think about outer space and multiplying the sea as far as the stars of heaven, the sand of the sea. That's deeper stuff, that's deeper waters, amen? amen? But see, the only reason why you can get there is because you've already got this thing over here. The reason why you like to live in the, the vagueness of, of the Bible is because, man, your mind can be blown at what's possible. But I, what I know about those of you that think that way is you always still come back to, we're going to see one day. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What I do know is this. I do know that one day the trumpet's going to blow. Mm -hmm. The voice of God's going to, the voice of God, the voice of the archangel, mm -hmm. and uh, with the shout and all those kind of things. Yeah. Uh, Mike asked me this morning before we came into church, he said, uh, Daddy, he said, uh, 
He said, you, you were saying that maybe the rapture is going to happen during the daytime because of the clouds. I said, yeah, bud. He said, I remember you saying that. He said, but how come in the Psalms it says it could be at evening? I said, buddy, because it could be at evening. I don't know what I don't know what time of day. I, I think it's during the daytime because of the cloud by day, the pillar of fire by night. That's just what I think. But like mom asked me the other day, well, whose time zone? Well, God's time zone. I don't know. I don't really care when it is, to be honest with you, as long as it takes place. And I'm not worried about that because i got the first principles to know it will take place. But see, I can, I can, I can assume some things about that stuff. And, and, and Paul says, you've not injured me by what you think. Amen. You're injuring yourselves. And what am I saying? I'm saying this church needs milk. I'm saying I've got new Christians in here. This church has a bunch of babes in it. This is a baby church. And y'all need milk. More than you need meat. You guys need milk. And I've missed it. Yeah, amen. Now, I, I've been able to preach a lot of doctrine and a lot of meat because I didn't have J, uh, Jason and Glory and Jim and, Gar and, uh, and, and Brad and Josie and Tim uh, in here. So I, I, I've, had, I, I, I've been able to give a lot of meat. But y'all started slowly coming in. And y'all need milk. Yeah. And as those of you that have been saved a long time or have been in other good churches a long time, you know what they need out of you? They need milk out of you. Yeah. Yeah. When you get around these young Christians, don't be giving them a bunch of meat. Give them milk. Amen. That's right. Yeah. Give them milk. Yes. Let your pastor give them meat. Yeah. Yeah. And I give it to the whole congregation. Amen. But my goal, my focus, my aim is to give you milk. Because we're a baby church. Yeah. Now, if they come asking you questions, you older, mature questions, they give you some. They got some meaty questions. You can give them a meaty answer, but don't forget to let them wash that down with some milk or some yeah. water. Amen. Say so the only reason why I know this is because First John chapter five verse twelve, First John five thirteen. These things are written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. Yeah, you want a milky verse? He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. Not one word of them more than five letters long. That's a milky verse. You want a milky verse? John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that, God, that He gave His only begotten Son, who whoever believes in Him should not pray for everlasting life. That's a milky verse. If they got a meaty question, give them a meaty answer, but help give them a side of milk with it, brothers and sisters. Because this really is, a, it's come back, or I, I missed it, but it's come back around to an infant church. Now, it's a strong church. Y'all are good people. This is a good church. Amen. You show up. You show out. You sing. You shout. You praise. It's not dead. Yeah. No, absolutely it's not. not dead. But I'll tell you what'll do, what, how this church will be killed. You ready? Is if I miss giving you milk and I continue just to pour the meat down your gullets. Yeah. Yeah. I will suffocate you and drown you on meat. Yeah. And when he said the other night, it stuck out to me. He says a lot of churches, it's dead preaching, it's dead singing, it's dead giving, it's dead missions, it's dead people. But they got a name that looks like it's alive because there's people in it, but it's dead. Yeah. I don't want to kill y'all. <laughs> I don't want to murder y'all. I want to nurture you. I want, to I want to watch you grow. My desire as your pastor, as your parent, if you will, is to watch you grow spiritually. God has always grown this church in time. The way He's chosen to grow this church over the last year or two is by bringing in babes. Amen. And then what we need as babes is milk. Okay? You with me? Yes. Be a strong church if we do. Yes. All right, let's close in a word of prayer. Um, Brother uh, Dave Jr., why don't you dismiss with a word of prayer? Sure.